everyone. Uh, thanks so much for uh, waking up so early and come to the stage to listen to our talks. And uh, I'm Lun Wong, and I'm a <coughs> second year PhD student at UC Berkeley, uh, working with Professor Dong uh, who will also be giving a talk later today. Uh, so uh, today I'm going to talk about our new project, uh, namely CHIRP, which is a dynamic community proactive sexual sharing scheme. And uh, this is a joint work with Canal University and is supported by SA3 and Oasis Labs, so I especially want to thank them here. So uh, decentralization is widely seen as a very important step in the democratization of resources, and this is largely facilitated by the rise of blockchain systems in the past decade. Uh, so these blockchain systems are used in various applications. Uh, the most well-known is cryptocurrency, and uh, some other include voting system and identity management system. Uh, but the common thread across all these applications is the requirement that the user need to manage their own private key, which is not easy because uh, it is reported that 12 billion of cryptocurrency is lost because of uh, lost keys. So now people have turned to an alternative. They turn to store their keys with centralized identities such as uh, uh, Coinbase. But actually, this kind of uh, centralization of keys undermines a very decentralized nature that define the blockchain systems. So our idea is why not we decentralize our keys like uh, our resources, and uh, uh, we propose to use a technique in cryptography called secret sharing. And also our uh, original intention is to uh, distribute keys. Uh, our protocol can actually be used in many other applications such as uh, private smart contracts, uh, manage encrypted documents, and threshold credential issuance. So first, let's take a look at what secret sharing is. So a secret sharing scheme is uh, composed of two algorithms, a share algorithm and a recover algorithm. So given a secret, uh, the secret share algorithm output all the secret shares, and given all the secret shares, uh, oh, excuse me, not all the secret shares, but uh, enough secret shares, the recover algorithm can recover the secret. So actually there are two requirements of these two algorithms. The first one is correctness, which means uh, the recover secret should be the same as the original secret. And the second one is security, which means given less than a number of uh, secret shares, it's almost impossible to distinguish two different secrets. So uh, maybe the most widely used secret sharing scheme is uh, Shamir secret sharing. So the high level idea is um, you have a secret and uh, you generate a random polynomial whose constant term is the secret. And then you evaluate the polynomial on other points except zero. And you view these points on the polynomial curve as your secret shares and share it to uh, many parties in your committee. And uh, whenever you want to uh, recover your secret key, um, you fetch those secret shares from the parties in the committee and interpolate those points to get the polynomial curve and evaluate on the zero to uh, recover your secret. So a very straightforward idea will be uh, why not we uh, directly apply Shamir secret sharing to our private keys and we are done. Uh, this is good and it provides uh, very, two very good um, properties. Uh, the first one is called security, which means it is very hard for an adversary to compromise your key because the adversary needs to compromise enough parties in your committee to steal the key. And uh, another property is called availability, which means whenever the user wants to fetch her own key, it's always possible because the adversary needs to compromise uh, N minus T parties to prevent the user from getting her own key. So here N is the number of the parties in your committee and the T is the threshold of your secret sharing scheme. Uh, so this seems pretty attractive, but if you take a closer look, you will see that it is based on a very impractical assumption that is the adversary can only compromise um, T minus one parties in infinite time. Uh, but however, let's assume a situation where there is a common vulnerability across all the servers of all the parties, and uh, the adversary can compromise at a constant rate, which means it can constant one server in a given time. And uh, this means he can compromise more than t minus one parties in infinite time. 
And uh, this uh, situation is pretty common in practice. So in order to uh, address this issue, people have uh, proposed a proactive secret sharing. So it is based on conventional secret sharing, but the difference is it periodically refreshes the secrets. So there are two kinds of proactive secret sharing. One is static and one is dynamic. The difference is the dynamic one, uh, besides uh, update the secret shares, it also change uh, the members in the committee. So we can see that uh, the assumption in dynamic proactive secret sharing is actually changed to the adversary can compromise at most T minus one parties in a fixed time period, which is much more practical. And this is a common workflow of a dynamic proactive six sharing scheme. So uh, at first, uh, there must be some setup and share phase uh, where the users create the secret shares and send them to the party in the committee. And uh, then the committees will hold the same secret share for a while, which we call epoch. And uh, when an epoch ends, uh, the old committee needs to hand off the secret shares to the new committee, and the new committee needs to update the secret shares, which we call it a handoff phase. And we will repeat this process until the user wants to recover her key. Um, however, if we take a closer look, we will see there is an uh, inner contradiction with our previous assumption. That is, um, during the handoff phase, actually the old committee and the new committee coexist. So according to our assumption, uh, we can uh, comp compromise uh, T minus one parties in each of the committee, which means we can compromise uh, two T minus two in total, which is typically larger than our threshold, which means it is possible that the adversary can, co can compromise or destroy our secret during the handoff phase. So in order to solve this problem, um, our idea is what if we can change the threshold of our secret sharing scheme? Uh, so if we can uh, switch the threshold to a higher one and switch it back to a lower one, uh, switch it to a higher one before the handoff phase and switch it back uh, after the handoff phase, uh, then we are good. And actually we can do this by using bivariate polynomial secret sharing and uh, dimension switch. Um, so bivariate polynomial secret sharing is very similar to Shamir secret sharing, except it uses a bivariate polynomial. Uh, the same thing is it also, sends, uh, uh, it also sets the constant term of the polynomial as a secret. But the good thing about this one is it can share the secrets in two ways. It can share it along the x-axis, and it can also share it along the y-axis. And because the maximum degree of uh, the x and y in a bivariate polynomial can be different. Uh, and recall that um, the degree of the polynomial actually uh, defines the threshold of a secret sharing scheme. Uh, if we can change between x sharing and y sharing, we can actually change between two different thresholds in our secret sharing scheme. So um, this is a very simple example and we use a two, three uh, bivariate polynomial. So let's take a look like, uh, at how we uh, change the threshold. So at first, there are two parties and each of them hold three points which form a two secret sharing. And in the handoff phase, it sends the shares to the new committee, but rearrange the ownership of the points in this way. So each of the party holds two points and uh, it's now a three threshold secret sharing. So by this way, we can switch the threshold of our secret sharing scheme. And after the secret shares are sent to the new committee, they need to update the secret shares. And uh, the high level idea is uh, because the only term that matters in the bivariate polynomial is the constant term, we can always add a zero hole polynomial to it without changing our secret. Uh, so in this case, we add a zero hole uh, update polynomial to the original bivariate polynomial. And we can see that the secret does not change but all the secret shares change. So not, let's take a look at uh, how we deal with malicious party in our committee. And we choose to use commitment scheme and the blockchain uh, or any consensus protocol to solve this problem. Um, so first let's take a look at what commitment scheme is. So commitment scheme is a cryptographic primitive that allows somebody to commit to a value without revealing it. And you can always review it later and verify that your commitment is correct. 
So the high-level idea is whenever a party in the committee wants to send a message to another party in the committee, uh, it always needs to put a commitment on the blockchain. And everyone in the committee can verify uh, some property of all the messages using the commitment on the blockchain, uh, such as all the messages sum up to zero. And whenever a party receives a message from another party, it always fetch the commitment from the blockchain and verify that the message is actually correct. So by this two-step ver verification, uh, we can make sure that the protocol are uh, going fine. But what if the check fails? So actually in Chirp, we have uh, three paths. If everything goes fine, then we will run the optimistic path with uh, least uh, performance cost. But when uh, a malicious party is found uh, by the failure of verification, we will deviate to some pessimistic path. And we have two kinds of pessimistic paths that deals with different kinds of failure. Uh, the first one deals with normal failure, and we will uh, use uh, another protocol to find the malicious party and expel it and uh, uh, re-execute the whole protocol. And another one is a little bit tricky uh, because we use a commitment scheme called KZG in our uh, protocol, which needs a trusted setup. But if the trusted setup uh, fails, uh, it's actually possible that the adversary can uh, fake a commitment. And uh, we also have a special verification for this one, and if that fails, we will deviate to this pessimistic path and uh, uh, change the commitment scheme to uh, one that without the trusted setup. So now let's take a look at the performance comparison. Uh, so optimum shorts MPSS is a state of art, but it suffers from a very low off-chain communication cost. So we can see it has a ON to four complexity. And the chirp updates it to ON square complexity, which is much more practical. And we achieve this improvement by uh, two techniques. The first one is uh, the KZG commitment I mentioned. Uh, it has a constant complexity compared to the commitment they use in short MPSS, which has a ON complexity. And uh, another N factor improvement is provided by the bivariate polynomial secret sharing. Uh, scheme. Uh, so in short term PSS, they use another scheme to uh, overcome the hand of challenge, which uh, introduce another own complexity. Uh, so at last, let's take a look at the implementation and evaluation. So uh, we evaluate uh, our protocol in two settings. Uh, land setting means we start all the machines in uh, the same data center, and one setting means we start the machines across the world. And uh, so in the LAN setting, we can see more clearly how uh, the uh, computation uh, cost compare between our protocol and other protocol. And uh, in the one setting, we also consider the uh, effect of uh, network delay. So first, we measure the off-chain communication cost and uh, the practical performance conforms with the theoretical performance perfectly. So we can see uh, the short time PSS has a ON to four complexity and our protocol has a ON to two complexity. So if we take a closer look, we will see that with a community size of 100, um, our protocol actually reduces the off-chain communication cost by uh, 2,000 times, uh, which is uh, very impressive. And we also measure the latency of our protocol and compare it with short time PSS. And uh, you can see that, um, so in the LAN setting, short time PSS needs 12 seconds to uh, finish the handoff phase, uh, while our protocol in the one setting only needs five seconds, which is uh, a very good improvement. And also our protocol has seen its initial industry implementation at OSS Labs. Uh, I'm an intern there this summer and uh, implemented a prototype for them, and their engineer team uh, plans to integrate it in their system in the future. So uh, at the end, uh, I want to repeat several uh, very important points. Uh, so first of all, Chirp is a dynamic proactive secret sharing protocol. And uh, the difference uh, between it and other secret sharing protocol is it has a very good uh, asymptotic communication cost. And we implement the Chirp, and it achieves a 2,000 performance uh, boost. Uh, so thanks so much. And if you are interested, please check our website. And if you have any questions, uh, please feel free to ask or send me an email. Thanks.